Welcome into another edition of the Prep Red Zone Coaches Corner. I'm your host, Michael Knight, the director of Prep Red Zone Oklahoma, and I'm joined now by another first-year head coach uh, again in the Oklahoma City area. Last week, we were talking with new Edmond North head coach Carter Whitson. This week, it's new UConn head coach Brent Barnes. Uh, not necessarily a, a new head coach. He, he's been in the business for quite a while, and now back to Oklahoma after several years in Arizona. First off, coach, uh, thanks for joining me today and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, Brent Barnes and that offense that you've had over the last decade back in Oklahoma after uh, a few years out in Arizona. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, thanks for having me on. And uh, uh, yeah, just uh, looking forward to get back and getting to work. Yeah. So for, for those not as familiar with, with your background, you, you coached at Union, UConn. This actually is your second stint at UConn, the first as a head coach. Uh, you spent time out in Arizona, but then you were a head coach, named the head coach at Norman North back in 2015. Uh, you, you were with the Timberwolves for three seasons, helped lead them to a state championship game appearance. And then you took a job out in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I know for you, or at least when I go back to that time, and you can tell the story better than I can. But when I go back to when you took that job, it was, you know, an opportunity to be closer to family, things like that. Just talk about your decision to to leave Norman North a few years ago and, and go out to Arizona. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, they're all tough. I mean, really, uh, anytime you're at a really good place and with good people, uh, it's always tough to leave. So it's one thing for me that I've realized now I'm doing this again, like it's, it's extremely difficult to leave. Uh, you can be as excited as you want about a new opportunity and other things, but uh, when you're at good places around good people um, and have, have, you know, especially when you have success and have great, great memories, uh, that's always tough. But, you know, for me, it's always been, every move is always about what's best for the family. And I, anybody I would hire as a coach to work for us, I would understand you know, and I would, I would expect to do the same thing for them, you know, themselves as well. So, you know, for me, that's what it really boils down to. Um, it's about opportunity, but also, you know, how does it fit within our family structure and is it the right thing for us at the right time? And, uh, you know, so for, you know, for Norman North, you know, I was there for seven years. So um, only three as the, as the head coach, but, you know, left union to go there to be the offensive coordinator with uh, coach Stanley, who's now at Deer Creek. Uh, and then when he left, I had the opportunity to uh, uh, to get the head job there and and um, and and also sustain a lot of the same staff that was there. Coach Tigner, who's also going to be with me at UConn um, and Coach Roberts and, and and Coach Walker. And, you know, a lot of the guys that were a part of what we were doing there at Norman North ever since we got there in 2011 uh, with most of us getting there together. Um, and so we were able to kind of keep that together and then just really, you know, try to raise it to the next level. And uh, we were blessed with some great talent and had some great years there. Um, but, you know, kind of after a couple of years there, again, it, we had been there for seven years. So, it's, it, yeah, only three as the head coach. But, you know, been there for, for a while. And uh, but at the time we had young young kids. They were at that time seven and three, uh, two boys. And, uh, you know, my parents were out in Arizona. Uh, we didn't have any a direct, we have a lot of family here in Oklahoma city, uh, but you know, no parents, no grandparents. So one of my kids would kind of grow up, especially at that age, you know, to be able to grow up around the grandparents, um, you know, it was nice for us to have help with the grandparents as well. Um, you know, and then also just, you know, just, uh, just to see what living in Arizona was like as a family. Uh, and so there, there was at the time that just felt like, and again, you know, I don't want to leave a job to go to any job, you know, so when I left Norman North, it was for a great, great opportunity out there in Scottsdale. Uh, Chaparral High School is a, a known program uh, that's had great success, won championships. Uh, that was down a little bit, um, you know, down for them, I say, you know, just it had been, you know, I think uh, eight or nine years since they had won a championship. And, uh, you know, we're kind of hovering around 500 or just above, you know, at the time. And so, uh, it was a great opportunity. Uh, again, we were fortunate. It was great for the family during those five years, and we were fortunate to have some success. And And uh, we won a championship, uh, lost in the championship the following year. Uh, and then, you know, my parents have since moved to uh, the state of Florida. So uh, we no longer have grandparents in the state of Arizona. And, and uh, you know, I think just kind of reached the point now, the boys the age that they are, that, you know, maybe, maybe getting back to Oklahoma and raising our, our boys – uh, here, um, you know, maybe just as a better fit for our family. And so that was, you know, but again, 
had a great job. And so there was very few opportunities that I would probably even look at. And, you know, just there, there were a lot of conversations had um, about the job out here. And, you know, as we started to really discuss some of the opportunities, I just think uh, obviously everybody points to the facilities, which are only going to get better. We're, you know, in the process of this fall, of break, we'll break ground this fall on a, a full size, you know, full football field size, hundred yard indoor facility uh, yeah. with a new weight room and all that. So there's, we're going to be, uh, you know, doubling down on on the good facilities here uh, and improving and, and doing everything we can. Uh, at the same time, you know, for me, always just uh, had a desire to be in a community that's one high school, one town, um, you know, that you can really build from the bottom up. And, and uh, you know, again, as you pointed out, I worked here as a, a very young assistant really early in my career for two years before I went to Tulsa Union. And uh, so it's a place I'm familiar with. I know um, the principal, Melissa Barlow, was was here. We worked with her um, when, when I was here then. And so, you know, we know a lot of people and they were great people. It's a great community that supports each other and takes care of each other. Uh, and again, just a, you know, a place that we thought maybe would be great for our family, um, you know, to, to have a chance to come back to. How much, because you answered several of my follow-up questions about like at what point did you know you wanted to come back to Oklahoma at you know what point did you know that the Yukon job specifically was what was going to attract you the answer you kind of got into it a little bit but I got to think you know hearing that response and hearing some of the things you said about your decision to to come back to to Oklahoma and Yukon specifically it sounds like it was kind of a perfect storm. Like, you know, if this job's not open, maybe you stay in Arizona or maybe you look elsewhere. Uh, it sounds like UConn w was the perfect fit for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 I mean, again, there's only, we had talked about it. I mean, every year we were out there, you know, is this where we want to stay long-term is this, and, and I, you know, I still not even sure that, you know, you know, that answer all the time, but, you know, I think we were open to the thought of coming back to Oklahoma. So, it wasn't so much that we were dead set on, we're going to move back. Um, we were open to it. And, uh, you know, again, when this opportunity came up, uh, there were just a lot of things about it that were presented to us that um, seemed like maybe the right time to do it. And, uh, you know, uh, to give it a chance to come back to Oklahoma. Um, it just, uh, you know, Oklahoma was always going to be home for us, no matter whatever happens in our life, in our career. Uh, I mean, this is where I was born and raised and, uh, you know, my wife is, you know, born and raised in Oklahoma, Texas. She's been, you know, kind of all over. So this is home for our family. And, uh, you know, again, just, uh, you know, just the opportunity to be in a community like this. And and I think for the things that it has in place, and obviously we were going to have a, a ways to go to get to where we want to get for results on the field. Uh, but I just feel like we, uh, we, we know what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to be bringing in a staff that's been a part of the success that we've had. And, um, you know, so we know what it looks like and what it's going to take. And, uh, you know, I don't know how long it'll take us to get there. I'm not a patient person, so hopefully not longer than it has to. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to want to have success right away. But at the same time, we're going to try to build it the right way. And, uh, you know, whatever whatever it takes to, you know, to continue that and and uh, build towards the future and what we're trying to build and try to do, um, that's what we're going to do. So, um, you know, just again, I think it had all the things there that were um you know that, that worked for our family and that was uh, an opportunity at the right time uh to maybe uh see if uh you know being back in Oklahoma is what's best for our family yeah well when I look at the landscape in 6A1 and you're no stranger to it you know being at Norman North and coaching at Union you know what it's like and you know I, I don't I'm sure you're well aware of what Bixby has done over the last several years. So they're the new kid on the block in six, a one. So it's, it's a land of giants that that's for sure. And, and when you look at, at UConn and I had the same conversation with, with, you know, the guy who you're replacing in Marshall Hahn, you know, just a few years ago, when I look at this UConn program and it's kind of the unspoken thing around Oklahoma, it feels like a program that's a sleeping giant. And, and when I say that, I mean, you mentioned the facilities, you mentioned the the numbers just in the school, there are athletes, you know, I know the track program has had success. There's some athletic kids that have come through UConn and it feels like a program that is just, it, it's waiting. And it's been waiting for that moment where just a light bulb comes on and it becomes one of those perennial contenders every single year in 6A1. I'm sure that was another big part of, of what attracted you because you, you had familiarity with the program, with the community, things like that. 
And even since your first stint at, at UConn, things have changed in, in that community dramatically. And so, you know, it's not so much a direct question, but it, there has to be a lot of excitement that, you know, if we do this right, you know, we can start contending. We can start making playoff appearances year after year and start climbing that ladder to becoming one of the big boys in 6A. Absolutely. I mean, if I, and if I didn't believe that that could happen in some way, then, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, worth doing. So, um, you know, I, I certainly believe that I'm excited about the future opportunities here and, and I think what we can build. And uh, yeah, I mean, and it may take, it's going to take some really hard work and it's going to take some commitment. And, and as you said, really for everybody else, belief, you know, I mean, I think belief that, that it can happen here. Um, it's a growing community. I mean, there's neighborhoods popping up everywhere out here. Um, and that's the thing for me is, you know, we, we want to, we want to try to do everything we can to make, I mean, when people decide, you know, where they're going to live, where they're going to move, where they're going to do whatever, like to me, I mean, I think UConn's an attractive community. And so, I mean, it was for me and, and for our family. And so, uh, you know, we're, I'm hopeful that that will be the case, you know, for other families when they, you know, when they're in those situations that, um, that UConn's an attractive place to be. And we want UConn football to be a place that people think about wanting to be a part of. And, you know, what we got to find right now is people that want to be a part of that change. You know, I mean, it's it's not going to happen overnight. And, uh, you know, but we want people that are willing to say, I want to be a part of turning this thing into what it's going to be at some point. Right. And I believe it's some I do believe someday, whether it's me, somebody else, what I mean, be, it's not going to be because of me or because of our staff. Or it's going to be because of the kids eventually, you know, but eventually UConn football is going to have success. It's going to happen. I do know that. Now, do you want to be a part of that or do you, I mean, that's what we have to really try to, we have to go out and find is people that really want to be a part of taking it to that place. And, uh, and it takes a lot of hard work. Not everybody's willing to sign up for that. And uh, you know, so whether it's coaches, um, community uh, players, you know, we need people that say, listen, let's, let's give this thing a real shot. Let's, let's invest in what we need to invest in our time, our commitment, um, everything, our belief that we're going to make this successful. And if you do that, I think it has the makings to be, to be possible. It just, but it's going to take it. I mean, it's going to take a lot of people uh, to group together and say, we're going to do this and we're going to find a way to make it work. Now uh, you talk about the changes that are coming to UConn football. And I think, you know, whether it's the fans, the community, things like that, something that, that, I'm assuming we can anticipate as far as the first change is the offense. The last, you know, six years, however long it's been since Jeremy Reed took over after being at Altus, the offense has been pretty simple. We're going to run the ball. We're going to run that option offense. Uh, and in 6A1, it was going to be interesting to see how it would work against some of the, the bigger programs in the state. Uh, you're an offensive guy. You had some really, really successful offenses at Norman North that I'm familiar with. Uh, I'm assuming we're, we're not going to see the flex bone at UConn. Anytime <laughs> yeah. I mean, and listen, for all the great things that the flex bone is and it, uh, you know, and I know that, that they've had success with it too in the past and, and, uh, but that's just not me. So, yeah. So <laughs> because it's not me, you know, that we, we won't be doing that for sure. So no, we, uh, we're going to be doing what we've been doing. I mean, we've actually, um, you know, I started calling the offense in 2011 there at Norman North and we've been running the same offense. Um, you know, obviously every year, the, the, the one thing that I love about it is it, it, we still can tailor it to our, our personnel and to the yeah. athletes that we have. So it's not a just complete plug and play. This is the only thing we do this. How, we're going to adapt it to the, the skill set of our best players and, and what we've got. But at the same time, it, it, it has a it has a structure and it has a base and it has things that we do and that we hang our hat on and that we're still going to continue to do. Um, you know, we got to find the one or two guys that we've got to get the ball to that can really make things happen and then and then build off of that. And so, you know, that's that's what we've been able to do and have success. And you go back and look for the last 10 years. I mean, whether it's, you know, being the leading passing team and, you know, having the leading passer or. You know, I know the last couple of years at, at Chaparral there, I mean, well, one year here at Norman North with Drake and Charlie and Colin Klein, they all had a thousand yards. So, you know, we had a season where we had three thousand yard receivers all in the same offense. Uh, and I think we had, a, we, we rushed for over a thousand yards also at the same time. Um, and then, you know, the past couple of years at Chaparral, you know, we've had a new receiver 
Uh, Juan was a kid that we moved from running back, never played receiver before, but he led the state in catches and yards. Um, you know, last year, same thing. We had a, a receiver, a natural receiver that played, but he played defense the year before, um, you know, that had, again, the, the most catches and most yards in, in, in 6A. So, uh, you know, for us, that offense kind of revolves around if you've got that guy or two, um, they're going to have plenty of opportunities to make plays, and that's going to open up things for all the other, other athletes. So, you know, again, we've gone from, you know, four or five guys catching over 40 or 50 passes or three having 1,000 yards or, you know, then also having when you have, you know, one that really stands out to have a, you know, really big year. So, um, you know, but still we're going to base everything we do off making people honor the run game inside zone um, and honor the box. And if they don't, then we're going to, then we'll run inside zone, you know? So, um, you know, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's still what we're going to be based around and what we do and what we've always done. Um, and then, you know, if, if we can do that successfully and make them honor the run game and what we do, then, then we're going to have plenty of opportunities in the passing game. Now, uh, the transition going from Scottsdale back to Oklahoma with UConn, uh, I know you were hired earlier this year, but there's also been a lot of back and forth, you know, going back and forth be between Arizona and Oklahoma. Uh, what has that transition like? How much work have you been able to do with your new team as you try to, to get ready for spring ball here in, in you know, less than a week? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we haven't done a ton as far as X's and O's. I mean, just because at the end of the day, we've also got, you know, we've got some key players that are on the baseball team and they're still playing this week and, yeah. um, you know, tracks going, you got, you know, so, you know, in the off season, you've got guys that are kind of busy doing other things also. So when I've, I've been back and we've, we've, uh, you know, we've installed some things offensively and, you know, kind of gone over, you know, kind of a little bit of, of some of the things that we do when we get on the field and practice and, uh, we've watched film. We've, uh, you know, we've gone over some of those things, but, you know, I, I, I try not to do too much of that, especially right now coming in new, um, you know, we're going to hit it pretty hard here in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, we'll start doing some of that stuff. We're going to actually start officially um, a week later than, than most people, as far as spring practice goes, we'll start May 22nd. Um, our school here gets out on, on the 18th and because we're, you know, a little bit behind and because of the situation, you know, we're going to go ahead and just uh, just start then and, and really dive into it and really get into, um, you know, what we're, we're wanting to do uh, on both sides of the ball uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. So the next the next, you know, I, I'm here this week, I'm back again next week and then good and then for good, you know, at that point. So at this point, I'm you know, I'm here, you know, every week. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we'll just be kind of finalizing as much as we can, getting as many guys on the staff uh, as we can. Uh, it's going to be a complete staff turnover. So. We've got spots that we're still hiring um, that we're looking at, um, you know, but we've got some pieces in place as well. And, um, you know, hopefully we can have more and, 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 you know, as much as we can at least be operational here in, in, in the next week or two, um, you know, and then, uh, and then fill in whatever we need from there. But, um, you know, we're just going to really make a big push then to, to try to get, uh, you know, get everybody prepared. And then, but then when we get on the field, we can kind of get moving a little bit more. Yeah, and I got to think that you have to to find that that balancing act between like, look, you know, we, we have a few months before the football season starts. But at the, the same time, we also have a few months and, and that could fly by in the blink of an eye. And so you have to find a balance between, all right, let's hit it hard. Let, let's get this work in. Let's do what we need to do. But at the same time, you don't want to overwhelm because at the end of the day, we are still talking about 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids. And, you know, attention spans, things like that. We know the routine. So how do you find that balancing act of, okay, we need to hit this specifically hard. Uh, maybe we pull back on, on something else because, you know, it's, you know, overwhelming them at this moment. Uh, I got to think that that's going to be a, a huge, you know, vital part to, you know, two months from now, the success of the program uh, is how you start in finding the balance between what do we push? What do we hold off? Let's not overwhelm them with, with too much at, at one time. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that'll be something we'll probably just have to see when we get out there too, you know, and, yeah. and just kind of fill out as we go. I mean, there's obviously base installs that we have and um, you know, things that, that we'll start with and then we'll make sure that we're, that we're covering really well before we move on to the next thing. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, right now we're not planning on joining some big team camp and things like that. I think that puts a lot of pressure on, we got to be almost like fall ready. You know um, if we find, if there's a team, um, you know, that wants to come over for one day and, you know, run some plays against each other or things like that, we, we, we'd absolutely do that. But, 
you know, I'm not really seeking out going to a six, eight team team camp and yeah. you know, just running tons of plays against everybody. You know, we, for us, I mean, I don't think that's going to be beneficial this year. So I think I'd rather spend more time diving into what we need to do and focusing on us. You know, I'm also coming from a state that doesn't allow padded practices and we don't do team camps and anything like that. And we play really good football in the fall. So, um, so I, I know how, I know how to do it without all that stuff. So, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's great. I mean, spring ball is good. It's, and, and we'll still, you know, we'll put pads on cause we can, you know, we'll, we'll see some things, but at the end of the day, um, you know, sometimes there might be a little more made of that than really is needed. I mean, you, it, it's just, uh, you know, I think you can find out a lot of things about your guys and time. And at the end of the day, you got what you got. So you got to make whatever, whatever, um, you've got in your program as good as it can be. And, uh, you know, if a guy, you know, you find out in the fall, doesn't quite, work out at one position well you got to go to the next guy so you know there's not some uh some major you know event that takes place once you find that out so um you know that's just uh you know so at the end of the day we're, we'll probably just spend a lot more time just trying to get ready on our own terms and not just hey we got to be ready to go run plays against this team and you know have all these different adjustments and you know just because that, that just leads to some other things that you know i don't think we're quite ready for and so um, like I said, yeah, coming from, you know, where, where I, where I was at, I mean, you know, when I went out there, same thing, I didn't, and I'm moving sooner than I did when I went out there. Um, but, um, you know, I, it, it was, you know, we didn't have pads, we didn't have team camp, we didn't do any of that stuff. And, you know, we, we still started off the season five and two that year, you know, yeah. um, uh, with our first, that was there, that was Shap's first year in six A as well, moving up from five A. So, you know, I mean, it, it just, uh, you know, again, I've been through it, I've done it. And so, and I'm one too, that when I'm here next year, we'll be probably doing a whole lot more because yeah. we'll be, you know, we'll be pressing that limit, but right now there's only so much we can do. And so I think we'd be rushing into things we're not really um, prepared for that. I don't think it's going to help us. And, you know, one thing too, uh, I remember from the past is, you know, whether it's spring, what, but definitely from fall to spring, but even sometimes from spring back to the fall, you have to reteach half the stuff you do anyway. I mean, I'm sorry, unless you're literally watching film and studying it and going on the film, doing it every day, your kids are going to forget. Yeah. I mean, they're just, they're going to forget. They got to brush back on things. And, um, you know, so there we'll have to be doing all that stuff regardless. Um, but we'll get the base in and we'll, we'll get what we need and then we'll be prepared going into the fall for sure. Well, for content purposes, I love team camps. It's a great opportunity for <laughs> yeah. me to see as many schools as possible. So be uh, be on the lookout if you're watching uh, for Prep Red Zone. We're going to have a little spring tour going out to about nine or ten different schools where we're going to be seeing a ton of schools. So, so for content purposes, yeah, team camps. Oh, I get it. Oh, well. oh, yeah, for for a fan and for you know whatever. It's it's great. It's good stuff. And and at the end of the day, you know, we we'll, we will do it. And and I still would do yeah. it. I mean, again, there's somebody out there that wants to come over and work for a day, we'll, we'll do it. You know, I just, uh, for us, we don't need to go out and, and uh, get into some, you know, highly competitive environment that right now I don't think is going to really suit us. And what yeah. we need to do. Yeah, no, it, it makes yeah. absolutely sense. It makes absolute sense to me. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, talking about six, a one in, in the landscape and we, I, I, you know, hinted at it a little bit, uh, you know, you know all about it from your history, both working at, at Union, Norman North. Uh, you know what's out there and you know the programs and, and a lot of the same coaches are still there and still doing their thing. Uh, you know, from your time at Norman North and even, you know, going out to, to Arizona and you mentioned the success you had there. Uh, you know, what can you take away from those two spots as you go into the, this program with UConn knowing what's out there and you have big speed, you have jinx, you have a Wasso union, broken arrow, Mustang, you know, over in the West side, Mustang, Norman North, Edmond Santa Fe has, has made runs to, to championship games. So there's so much competition now in, in Oklahoma at the highest class. What can you take away from those last two stops where, you know, you are climbing a ladder, you are climbing a ladder, but you've done it before at your last two places. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, 6A1 is as competitive as it gets. I mean, it's it's a it's a meat grinder. I mean, it's just uh, <laughs> there are no gimmies. I mean, you can't just show up and just get a win. Um, you know, I mean, it just doesn't happen. And so, I mean, you got to come prepared and you got to go try to earn every victory that you can get. And they're they're hard to come by. Um, you know, like you said, there's right now, uh, you know, those East schools have really, I mean, developed and that used to be 
it was Jinx and Union. And, uh, you know, when I was at Union, it was Jinx and Union. And, yeah, B.A. and Owasso could maybe sneak in occasionally and get a win, but they weren't doing it in the playoffs at the time. Yeah. But, you know, in the last now really, I mean, I don't know, maybe even 10 years, but certainly the last five, five to eight years, uh, those schools have, you know, won championships. And they, they're they competing just like anybody else every year. Now you throw Bixby into the mix that they're up in the top level. Um, you know, there's, there's five programs there in the East that um, are ex- – extremely well coached great talent and have have the success behind them so um you know and then obviously on this side of the state you still have a lot of programs that have that year in and year out have had some of those chances and have competed with those schools and won and made some runs um and so you know you it's not like there's just only one on this side of the state i mean you still have you know you have those east powers but you also have some really really good competition and talent here in the Oklahoma city area that you got to deal with. And so, you know, for me, I mean, I, obviously I know it and I'm used to it from when I was at Norman North uh, and then coming from, uh, you know, when, when we got to Norman North, you know, they hadn't competed at that high level, you know, consistently that we were able to do um, in those seven years that I was there. Um, and uh, you know, and then at Chaparral, we, you know, they've now kind of changed how they do things in Arizona that probably resemble a little more of six, a one, where all the best teams compete against the best team. So um, even if you're not in the highest, you still have a schedule that, that you know, and, and they move like Chaparral is actually a 5A enrollment school that got put into 6A because they do it by success. So we actually weren't even a 6A enrollment, uh, but we were competing in 6A because of our history of success. And, um, you know, so, uh, so that, so, you know, and you're playing national powers like Saguaro, who was a rival of ours, uh, Chandler High School is pretty well known, um, you know, and then you've got others that have jumped into there, like like Liberty High School and, and Basha and other schools that, you know, are, again, just filled with Division One talent. I mean, the talent in the Phoenix Metro was insane. Uh, there's there's hundreds of Power Five prospects, um, you know, and so you're at week in and week out, you're competing against a D1 player almost every week. Uh, out there and and really multiple at most schools so um, you know it's uh, the the level of talent was extreme and I know that's what will be here and we've got a great challenge on our hands like I said but we're gonna have to dig in and and, uh, go compete and try to get better every day and uh, if we can do that eventually we can start start competing with guys and and uh, we'll take it one step at a time. I appreciate your time, Coach. And one last question for you uh, before we sign off. It's going to be our final question every single week with our first-year head coaches. You know, what does success look like in year one? You know, what can the fans, the the parents, uh, community members that might be watching this, what can they expect from the UConn Millers in, in 2023? What does success look like in year one for you? I think, you know, it's hard to say that it's an exact thing, but I think you can, I think you'll be able to see it. You know, I think you'll know um, we want, we want to look like it's been a success, right? So I'm not going to put a number of wins to it or anything like that. I mean, that will depend on like whatever talent we have and how we compete. Um, You know, we, we may, I mean, your talent may, may only get you two or three wins. Your talent may allow you to have five or six. I, you know, so whatever it is, are we maximizing that? Are we competing every week? Um, that was one thing that I was always proud of and, you know, and all of our teams, you know, especially there at Norman North for the good run that we had is we, we showed up every week and, you know, it, we, 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 you know, we might not have played our best, but I mean, we showed up every week and we competed and we rarely lost to teams that we felt like we maybe were favored over, you know? And so, and I can tell you a couple that we did and it happens, you know, but, uh, but, you know, I felt like we had a really good consistent consistency to us throughout the year. And I think that's what, you know, what we want to try to do here is consistently compete every week, um, get better as the year goes on and uh, just see some growth um, that, that we're competing every week. We have chances to win, whether we pull it off or not. um, And that we, that we find a way to compete. And when we have a chance to, to finish and win games, we need to do it. Uh, But, you know, more importantly too, I think just the surrounding culture in the program, hopefully that, you know, we're building a real positive environment, uh, and something that um, really is built around character and everything that we're doing um, and everything that we believe in. Um, and that that's also being represented throughout our community and our program. Coach, like I said, man, I appreciate your time. Welcome back to Oklahoma. Really excited to see 
what you do with this UConn program. I meant what I said earlier. I think it's a sleeping giant in 6A. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of work ahead, but at the same time, uh, this could be a, a pretty good start to the journey of what UConn football could be, you know, a year, two, three years from now. So uh, happy to have you back in the state and uh, looking forward to seeing what you do with uh, the UConn Millers. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on and uh, excited to get to work. That's right. Well, he's Brent Barnes, the head new head coach of the UConn Millers. I'm Michael Knight, the director of Prep Red Zone Oklahoma. Be sure to tune in every single Wednesday on our Prep Red Zone Oklahoma YouTube channel. We have a new conversation with a first year head coach coming up every week. You can go back and watch older interviews as well. If you want a little Edmund North football, uh, we had their first year head coach Carter Whitson on last week. So you can go and check that out every single Wednesday on our Prep Red Zone Oklahoma YouTube channel. For Coach Barnes, I'm Michael Knight, and this has been another edition of the Prep Red Zone Coach's Corner.